Work in accord with the Spirit of Christ. The Third Testament, Revelations of Jesus Christ, Chapter 60. Qualities and abilities needed in the new apostles. Thus saith the Lord. How difficult it seems for you to make way, complying with your mission during this period. But I say to you that it is not difficult, because humanity is prepared to receive my message. In all eras, the weak have been intimidated before the struggle, while the strong have shown that the faith in my law overcomes everything. Your destiny, Israel, has always been to convey to the world new messages and revelations. That is why sometimes you are doubtful whether you are believed. But do not fear. Take the seed which I have entrusted to you and sow it. You will then see how many lands that you believe to be sterile, you will find them rich on being fertilized with the truth of my doctrine. Do not cease to comply with your mission because you feel unworthy. Verily I say to you that he who knowingly violates the law does as much harm as he who has a mission and fails to give it fulfillment. Do not forget that in the end the Father will come to demand what you have done wrong, as well as to what you have failed to do. Know that one fault as well as the other will cause your spirit to suffer. Spread my doctrine, talk to mankind about my word, convince them with your deeds of love, invite them to hear me, and when they arrive among the multitudes and the light of faith is kindled in their heart, I will name them sons of the new people of Israel. Those who rise from their degradation, the scum of their egotism to a life of service and charity toward their brethren, I shall show them as an example that my doctrine has light and grace to regenerate sinners. That example shall spread to all hearts. Who will not wish to be of those who bear witness of me? But truly I say to you that if your actions do not emerge truthfully from your heart, they will not bear fruit on your brethren, and many times you will hear them calling you hypocrites and false preachers. I do not want this to happen to you. You must know that during these times it is very difficult to deceive humanity. Their spirit has awakened and although they are lost in the materialism of their existence, they are sensitive to every spiritual manifestation. And if you cannot deceive your brethren, will you deceive your father? Allow the love of your master to lodge within your being so that you may get to forgive your enemies, just as he forgives you. Then your heart shall be like an anchor of salvation among humanity. Do not feel fear because men, for truly I say to you, I will speak through your mouths, I will bear witness of my word through you, and its echo will reach the confines of the earth. The influential, the insignificant, the heads of state, the scientists and the theologians. I tell you again, do not fear the struggle. Say with all naturalness to your brothers that the Lord has been among you. Tell them that he who died on the cross was Jesus, the body in which Christ was hidden, the living temple which the word of God inhabited. But that Christ, the divine love, lives and comes in spirit to his children to show them the road that will take them to their spiritual kingdom. Do not fear the judgment or ridicule of sects and religions. Having the books of the prophecies in their hands, they are the ones who have not interpreted them, and thus have not known how to wait for me. On the other hand, you who did not know the prophecies which spoke of my return as the Holy Spirit were awaiting me. The third era has already come, and humanity has not known how to interpret the gospel. How can you invite humanity to reach such spirituality in an age of such materialism and confusion? Understand that your work is difficult, that to complete it you must be strong and patient in the contest. You must work much to correct the erroneous interpretation that has been given to my law and the imperfect form in which your worship is offered me. 
but you must remember that you cannot make their concepts and practices vary in an instant, but that to achieve it, you must sheathe yourselves in patience and goodwill, and give an example of love with your works. Only the clean of heart should go to the lands and nations to expand my message, for they will be the only ones worthy of giving testimony to the truth of this work. When these envoys depart for the lands that await them, all religious fanaticism will already have been erased from their hearts. There shall remain in them no desire to seek flattery or adulation, nor shall they dare to dirty their hands with the payment of the world for the charity they perform. They will not sell miracles, nor put a price on love for one another. They shall be servants, not lords. The time shall come in which you understand the greatness of true humility, and then you shall see that he who has known how to be a servant has been in reality free in his mission of doing good and sowing charity, and that in his life faith, confidence, and love have accompanied him. I tell you that you will know how to feel when your spirit is prepared to teach my doctrine to your brothers. For it will be when you have found yourselves, you will then hear clearly the voice of the conscience. For when that is not within you, you cannot truly feel me. Hear this word with attention and later analyze it and sow it in the hearts of your brothers. Do not be content merely to understand it, but speak of it, serve as an example, and teach it through your actions. Be intuitive so that you may know when is the propitious moment to speak, and when it is better to let your deeds give testimony to my doctrine. I give you one language only with which to extend my word, and that language is spiritual love, which will be understood by all men. A language sweet to the ears and hearts of humanity, which will go along toppling stone by stone the Tower of Babel which has been built up in their hearts. That is when my justice shall cease, for all will understand each other as brothers. Only when you have transformed will I send you over the world to spread my message, for until the spiritualism of my disciples is real, they shall know how to give, just as they have received from me. Understand that my teachings are not limited by your concepts or your ability to understand them. My divine wisdom is limitless. None can say that he had or had conceived of my revelations before I revealed them to him. While scientists try to explain everything through knowledge of the material, I am revealing the spiritual life to the humble, the essential life in which the reason and explanation for all that exists are given. From the knowledge you impart will arise the concept that men form of my works, many, from lack of understanding, will judge my doctrine by your humility, just as in the second era Jesus the Christ was judged by his humble appearance and simple clothing, and because the twelve who followed him also showed humility in their way of dressing. I can tell you truly that they were not covered in rags, but that they had renounced material vanity because from my teaching they had learned which were the true values of the Spirit. I tell you, disciples, when men arise to study my work and seek you out and question you, do not fall into the temptation of believing yourself superior due to the knowledge you have received from me. The more humble you show yourself to be, the more noble and worthy of trust you will seem to them. And so, from man to man, the light that dissipates fanaticism and frees the spirits will spread. And those who call themselves Christian without really being so, shall know and interpret the true teachings of Christ through this light. For it shall give them an elevated concept of the spiritual life of which Jesus spoke in his teachings. You could not go to humanity with a false or merely apparent preparation for their spirits have evolved, and the blindfold that covered their eyes has long ago fallen. Bear spiritually, offer peace, and make your surroundings into an environment of health and brotherhood, 
and you will see how they hear and accept your words, bearing my inspiration and essence. If you are to preach peace, be peaceful. If you speak of love, feel it before you put it into words. And if your brothers also offer you their fruits, do not reject them. Subject everything you come to know to study, and take from their doctrines what is right and just. You will find those who, fanaticized in their worship, have reduced their understanding by making their practices materialistic. Patiently help them to broaden their knowledge. Show them the horizons their spirits can reach if they know how to penetrate my teaching. You will speak to them of my universal spirit, of the immortality of the spirit, and of their constant evolution. You will teach them true prayer the communication of the Spirit, and you will free them from their errors and prejudices. That is the work I entrust to you, a work of love and patience. Heal all ills, those of the body as of the Spirit, for you have the mission of comforting, strengthening and healing your fellow men. And yet, I ask you, what health will you transmit to those who need it, if you yourselves are ill? What peace can emanate from your spirit if it is stirred by worry, suffering, remorse, and low passions? You can only offer to your brothers that which you have stored up in your own heart. I bring you a clear and simple teaching so that you learn to live among sinners without being contaminated, pass among thorns without being wounded, see horror and ignominy without being scandalized and inhabit a world of misery without fleeing from it, being rather desirous of remaining in its bosom to do all that is possible for its needy, sowing the seed of good in the paths of all. Since this Eden was made into an inferno by the sins of men, it is necessary that they cleanse their stains and return their life to its original purity. I will not send as emissaries those who are dead to the life of grace, for they will have nothing to give. I will not give this mission to those who have not cleansed the selfishness from their hearts. The emissary of my word must be a disciple of mine whose simple presence makes people feel my peace in their hearts. He must possess the virtue of knowing how to console his brothers, even in their difficult moments and bear always in his words a light that dissipates all darkness from the spirit and understanding. Comportment while spreading the word There shall he give numerous methods to allow my disciples to propagate this blessed seed, but never forget the humility and simplicity, because that is how I came to you, and in that same manner you will come close to the hearts, homes, and towns. If you come in that manner, you will be recognized as emissaries of a spiritual message, and your struggle will yield fruit of true spirituality, of regeneration and brotherhood. If you want to know what you must do among humanity, it is enough to look at what I have done with you beginning on the day that you first heard my word. I pardon you, I received you with charity and infinite love. I made you rest from the grueling journey. I did not stop to judge your condition, your sphere or class, but cleaned the leprosy of your sin and cured your ills. I have been understanding, indulgent and benevolent upon judging your defects. I have reintegrated you into the true life giving you a doctrine of love that enables you to save yourselves by saving your fellow men. There, in the works I have had with each one of you, you may find the best examples to be brought into practice among the needy in body and spirit, who will also come to you in caravans. By speaking to this people, I speak to humanity. To you it will come to go tomorrow to the hearts of men and fraternally pass to them my word which will consummate the work of redemption. You must be humble. It must not hurt you if they offend you. Be meek, they shall make you suffer humiliation and suffering. But your word, which will be my message, they will not be able to tear from their spirit.
for which reason I tell you that if some remain insensitive and deaf to your call, others shall awaken from their long sleep and rise up to march and channel their lives to the path of regeneration and repentance. Clothe yourselves in courage, faith, and strength to be able to face the struggle. Yet, I warn you, do not be intimidated when you speak with your brother because you see him well dressed, or because he is called prince, lord, or minister. Take from the example of Paul and Peter, who raised their voices before those the world called lords. They were great in spirit, and yet did not make a show of being lords before any, but acted like servants. Follow their examples, and give testimony of my truth with the love of your works. I warn you too, that he who takes up my word like a sword with which to wound his brother, or like a scepter with which to humiliate him, cannot call himself my disciple, nor can he whose passions are excited upon speaking of this doctrine, and who loses his tranquility, for he will not plant the seed of faith. I prepare disciple in one who upon seeing his faith, his most sacred beliefs, attacked knows how to remain serene, for he shall stand like a beacon in the storm. When you try to urge a sinner toward the good, do not do so threatening him with my justice, with the elements, or with pain if he does not reform. For you will infuse him with an aversion to my doctrine, show him the true God who is love, charity, and forgiveness. You will not be offended by the mockery of your brothers if you keep in mind that they mock because their ignorance does not allow them to see the truth. You will be compensated in those who upon coming to examine you and leave astonished by the internal peace that illuminates each of my true disciples. You in turn must never mock those who in their religious fanaticism are idolaters. For although they seek me in material forms, they worship me in them. Do not point out their errors to your brothers to try to have them corrected by doing so. You would more likely excite their anger and fanaticism in this way. It is enough for you to practice my doctrine with the love it demands to bring to light the errors of your brothers. You must use much patience a great deal of charity, and true love if you wish humanity to recognize soon the essence of my word, and to offer it true worship, and to come to recognize in each human creature a spiritual and material brother in God. I have come to prove to you that you can remove the blindfold from the ignorant or obsessed without harming, offending, or wounding them, and so I wish you to do it as well. I have proven in yourselves that love, forgiveness, patience, and indulgence are stronger than hardness, condemnation, and violence. I am once again setting the pattern for you to follow me. When you arise seeking humanity to convey to them the good news, do not beg them to listen to you. Carry out your mission with dignity, and those who believe you will be the ones whom I have chosen to make them my disciples. the correct way to spread the word. I have not delivered my word to you to have you preach it in the streets and parks. It is true that Jesus did so, but he knew how to answer any question and put to the test those who tried to test him. You are small and weak, therefore you should not challenge the wrath of your brothers. Do not try to attract attention. Believe that you have nothing in particular. Neither try to show humanity that everyone is wrong and only you know the truth, for in that way you will gain nothing good from your sowing. If you want to evolve spiritually and morally, do not judge the defects of your brothers. In order not to fall into the same error, correct your imperfections. Pray humbly before your master, so that you might inspire yourselves in his humility and remember his advice that you never publicize your good works, that your left hand never become aware of what the right might have done. I also say unto you, it is not necessary that you go out in search of multitudes to tell them about my doctrine. 
for my charity will place in your path those who are in need of your help. But if there are moments while fulfilling my law in which you might feel the need to do a charitable act, and you have no one in need around you, do not on that account despair nor doubt my word. That will be the precise moment in which you should pray for your absent brothers, those who will receive my charity if you truly have faith. Do not strive to know more than your brothers. Know that all of you acquire knowledge according to your evolution. If I were to grant you my light without you have achieved merits, you would glorify yourselves and become lost in your vanity, and your knowledge would be false. I want you humble, but in order to be humble before me, you should also manifest humility before your fellow men. Disciples, love and knowledge are never separated. One is part of the other. How can there be those who presume to separate these two virtues? Both are keys which open the doors of the sanctuary, which will allow you to fully understand my doctrine. I have asked you, do you want to have many friends? Then use kindness, tenderness, tolerance and compassion. For only with the help of these virtues, which are direct expressions of love, will your spirit be able to shine on the path of your fellow men. For the spirit carries love in its most intimate essence, since the spirit is a divine spark and God is love. I speak to those who must fulfill the mission of apostles and prophets in other lands, so that they do not boast of the mission entrusted to them. They shall not provoke scandal by combining either religions or beliefs. Others there shall be who promote scandal against you, not knowing that by doing so they are helping to propagate the doctrine, awakening in many a curiosity that shall later be converted to faith. My divine message, upon being deposited in you, must be converted to a brotherly one. And yet, to impress and move the materialistic hearts of humanity, this must be sheathed in the truth I have revealed to you. If you have hidden anything, if you have silenced anything, you will not give true testimony to what my revelations in the third era, and so you will not be believed. Very great is the moral and spiritual backwardness in which I find humanity. How great is the responsibility of those who have received the grace and light of my word in this time. Disciples, become teachers. Put away from your heart the fear of men. Dispose of the indifference and laziness. Recognize that you are, in truth, the bearers of a celestial message. It will be you who give the explanation of all that happens in these times and you who will have to struggle to teach the principles of my doctrine that humanity has forgotten. Do not repeat my word to your brothers just as I spoke it to you. Prepare yourselves so that you can explain it to them. Do not seek words to try to awe them with your flowery eloquence. Speak with simplicity, for this best expresses the truth of the Spirit. Be tireless, new disciples, in speaking this truth. The clumsy tongue that dares not to speak my word shall be untied at the moment of your decision. One single word said in my name can save a sinner, seal an abyss, or stop those obstinate in evil in their path. Do you not understand the power of my word? Do you not know the strength of your authority? Speak with examples and fulfill that part of my work that I have entrusted to you, and I will do the rest. If you see others of your brothers who go forth teaching the name and the word of Christ, do not look down on them, for it is written that my new coming will be verified when the word that I brought you in the second era has been spread all over the earth. And I tell you that there are yet places in the world that have not received that message. How may this essentially spiritual doctrine reach those peoples without them having received the divine seed of love the Redeemer gave you with His words and His blood? When you come to comprehend and feel the truth, you will see how easy it is for the Spirit to follow the steps of His Master. Even during the most difficult trials, do whatever corresponds to your part, 
for I will not ask for more than what you are capable of doing. Then you will have left the path ready for the new generations. I commend to you the children and charge you with leading them on the path of right. Gather them and speak to them of me with love and tenderness. Seek the disinherited, those who live lost in misery and vices. I give essence to your words, so they may be the path to salvation when they pour from your lips. Open before the innocent the book of true life, in order for their spirit to awaken and be great when penetrating the revelations of the Holy Spirit. Be like the Master, and you will be heard. I want those who have found the path to mark it out and make it easier for their brothers, and not to sow it with stumbling blocks, as many have done, impeding those who wish from coming to me. To you, O spiritualists, I entrust the task of tearing down that barrier that humanity has built up between themselves and God, a barrier of false faith of apparent belief in the eternal, of materialism, and of superficial worship. To you, O people, I give it to topple from its pedestal the golden calf those men, though they believe themselves far from idolatry and paganism, have not ceased to adore. Erase from men's minds the erroneous impression that the spiritual doctrines were formed based on ignorance, trickery, and fraud. Present my doctrine in all its purity and majesty, so that it may erase ignorance, fanaticism, and the hardness that does not permit humanity to think of their spiritual selves, which they have deprived of all freedom of action. You who have received this revelation are the ones indicated to announce to humanity my new manifestation through human understanding. Who would you wish to testify if you do not? If you wait for the princes or ministers of religions to take this good news to humanity, you are in error. For I tell you truly, that although they see me, they will not open their mouths to say to humanity, There is Christ, go to him. Do not sleep, waiting for those times I have spoken of to arrive, before you rise up and say to humanity, This that you see is what was written. No people, it is indispensable that you proclaim it ahead of time, that you prophesy it, that you prepare the path for the arrival of all that I have foretold and promised. That is when you will have fulfilled your mission as forerunners of the spirituality on earth. And so, when prodigies begin to come to light in the world, and the Spirit of the Lord speaks to you through events never seen before, and when the spirits of humanity begin to manifest unforeseen gifts and powers, you will see a shift in all the beliefs, theories, norms, institutions and sciences. It is then that humanity will admit that those who, from their humble stations, predicated a doctrine strange in appearance, were right because their words were confirmed by events. Then you will see the peoples of the earth interested in spiritual teachings, the theologians comparing the teachings of Christ with the new revelations, and you will see many who were always indifferent to the spiritual vividly interested in the study of revelations of this and past times. The Mission of Comforting and Healing Those Who Suffer I have given great gifts to my chosen ones. One of these is the power of healing, the balsam, so that with that gift you may fulfill a mission that is one of the most beautiful missions among humanity, since your planet is a veil of tears, where there is always pain to be found. By means of this gift, you have a vast field in which to sow consolation according to my will, and I have deposited that balsam in your being among the tenderest of your heartstrings. You have enjoyed it, before its prodigies you have bowed. Your hearts have softened when faced with the suffering of men, and you have walked always on the path of charity. Continue giving that balsam that is not found in your hands, for it overflows in a look filled with compassion, consolation, and understanding. 
It follows through good thoughts and becomes healthy advice in words of light. The gift of healing has no limits. Never forget that you are saturated with it. If pain makes you a victim, it is because you are subjected to a testing. Do not forget my teachings if you cannot remove the pain with that balsam. Forget instead your own sufferings and put your thoughts in others, those for whom the sorrow is greater. That is when you will see prodigies in yourself and in your brothers. How you must be prepared to penetrate in men's hearts, to know their secrets, which are hidden there, and what they need. I have come to teach you to give sustenance to the spirits, to heal them and give them light, and to show them the road to their evolution. He who hears this word and holds it in his heart shall become a guide, a doctor, a counselor. In his words will be a vein of light and consolation for his brothers in need of light. I give you a drop of the balsam, so that when you are persecuted, you may perform prodigies of healing among humanity. For in the great epidemics, when illnesses strange and unknown to science arise, the powers of my disciples will be manifested. I entrust to you a key with which you may open the most rusted of locks, the most stubborn hearts, and with which you may open even the gates of the prisons to give freedom to the innocent and save the guilty. Walk always with peace and confidence in me, for wherever you go, my angels protect you. They will join in your fulfillment and accompany you to the homes and hospitals, as well as the prisons and the camps of discord and war, wherever you go to plant my seed. Humanity will come, and among them Thomas, represented by the science and materialism, with their eyes ready to scrutinize, and not only their eyes, but with their fingers, to touch, to feel, and only in this way will they be able to believe in my existence and the spiritual events that will occur to one after another among humanity, and to which men will bear witness so that the Thomas of the Third Era can be overcome in his doubt and materialism by my love. I will give you the command to rise and go to work, for it will be a time of so great and clear signals that you will hear the voice of the spiritual world as well as that of this one, marking by events that the hour of your struggle has arrived. I will speak to you, spirit to spirit, and guide you on the path. Yet before you go to humanity as teachers, you will come as doctors, and when you have quieted their pains, they will be able to drink from the well of pure water of my word. Seek first the wounds, the sores and the sicknesses, and cure their ills, so that you then may reach their spirits. Go to your brothers like Jesus in the second era, bringing before my word the healing balsam. And what is the balsam? O oh, disciples, it is the water of fountains, blessed and made medicine for the sick. No people, the balsam of which I speak is in your hearts. I deposited it there as a precious essence, and only love can open it to rush out like a torrent. When you wish to pour it out over some sick person, it will not be your hands that anoint them, but the spirit inundated with love, charity and consolation. And there, where you direct your thoughts, the prodigy will be worked. You will be able to work in many ways upon the beings and elements of nature to bring consolation to all. I tell you also, do not fear illnesses and be patient and merciful with all. With regard to the possessed and those confused in their human minds, you may also cure, for you have that faculty as well and must put it at the service of those beings that have fallen into desperation and oblivion. Free them and manifest this power before the incredulous. It is one of the great missions of this people. Carry light where there is darkness. Break the chains of slavery and injustice, and prepare this world to behold the Lord and see themselves, their inner selves, with full knowledge of the truth. 
the moment for beginning the worldwide mission. If for the moment the world is so blind that it cannot see the light of truth, nor hear my call in the depths of their beings, pray and gain spiritual ground, for in these moments you will not be heard. For all peoples are consecrated to preparing themselves to destroy and to defend themselves. Men must blind themselves yet more until the desperation, the hatred, the terror and the pain reach their limits. Nor will that be the right moment to give them my message, for you will be like a voice crying in the wilderness, unlistened to by any. After the entire earth has been greatly tested and shaken, and every nation, institution and household fully judged to its roots, and humanity has cleansed every stain, you will go prepared in my name to make my doctrine to your brethren. When the time comes, beloved people, you will arise and share my holy word with your brothers. You will scatter throughout the world like good disciples, and this new gospel which I have brought you will spread. The light from the sixth seal will spiritually illuminate humanity in this period and with it mysteries will be clarified. My doctrine will become established in different nations, and all those things not yet discovered by men will be revealed through the light from the seven seals. Then you will speak to humanity about these teachings which you received, and will tell it how to fulfill my law.